So what's the, let's just be with the uh, commitment from the state then? You'll, you'll have to talk to Representative North and Representative Lucheski about that. The, um, the, the governor and uh, the Senate have not embraced the surcharge idea, at least not openly. Why are you still pressing forward with that, and what gives you hope that that will eventually become law? Uh, we believe that Minnesotans, um, we believe that Minnesotans want the school uh, shift repaid. Uh, we believe that um, it's important that we get our budget in order. And, and I also want to note about the surtax, in addition to the schools uh, pay, repaying the whole shift, uh, it also pays for a couple other one-time items. Uh, it pays for um, eliminating the sales tax, you know, the exemption on capital, the sales tax refund for capital, for capital uh, equipment. Uh, which is a uh, fairly significant investment that we're making uh, for, for businesses, uh, and it does a couple of other one-time items. So uh, we believe that those are all important things. They're all things that can be taken care of on a one-time basis to get our fiscal house in order before we do some additional spending. Uh, and we also think that it's a proposal that is uh, broadly supported by Minnesota. Could you clarify, please, the, uh, the, the tax rate, which Republicans uh, seem to be focusing on, saying it would be the second highest in the nation? And in particular, uh, and I think I'm confused with the 8.49%. So the 8.49% is the fourth tier that would be the permanent fourth tier income tax increase. Okay. It would be out of the top 10 in the country. Um, then the surcharge would be about 4% on top of that. It would be third, I think, in the country for two years temporarily. The surcharge is on top of the 8.49%. Yes. It looks like you chose a lower rate and a higher floor than the governor did. Can you talk about why you use that one? Who gets hit by the fourth tier? Sure. So the fourth tier again is starting at four hundred thousand dollars for married couples. Uh, it's the same agreement that uh, President Obama and uh, Congressman Boehner, Speaker Boehner, uh, came up with. Uh, we think that um, that shows that there's you know bipartisan support for that uh, that number, and we and then the lower rate, um, you know, we think is is the right place for for Minnesota to be, particularly with the surcharge proposal. How about your ranking? Back to that, how would you rationalize being third in the nation for taxes? It's for two years, uh, and it's to pay. It's for a good purpose, which is to pay back our schools. In the corporate area, other than eliminating the FOC and foreign royalties uh, subtraction and protection, is there anything else going on there with regard to uh, eliminating credits or loopholes? Uh, tax havens. There's a. There's a. Some other items. I would talk to Chairman Chesky about the details of that. When you uh, rolled out, and it's your yes, and it's reducing the foreign royalties. It's not eliminating. Okay. Okay. When you rolled out your targets a few weeks ago, uh, you said basically um, the revenue enhancements would come to about two billion, not counting uh, school shift payback. Uh, and you said 1.5 billion here. Have you scaled back, or is that a difference in how the spending is accounted for? It's probably that we just didn't. You know, I didn't have all the. I was doing rough back to the envelope math when I was talking to it, talking to you previously. Could you talk? How, how much do you expect that you get out of these alcohol to do alcohol taxes, and, and why are you going there now? And how much are you expecting to get out of that? Um, so. Oh, the reason we're going there is we believe that the cost associated associated with alcohol and, and tobacco uh, hit the state budget and Minnesotans hard, uh, and this is a way to address those issues. Um, the the uh, cigarette tax uh, amount is somewhat north of about four hundred thousand four hundred million dollars. Uh, alcohol about three hundred fifty million dollars. So what that accounts for, I mean, so what that means uh, for people, I mean, I suppose, on the alcohol side, it's about uh, seven cents uh, additional on a beer. Now, this is not a sales tax that's going to be imposed when you go to the bar and buy a beer. It'll be at the, at the wholesale level, but the kind of equivalent uh, number would be about seven cents a beer, seven cents a shot. You know, I suppose depending on how big a shot you're taking. <laughs> um, and, um, and I can't remember, on the wine, uh, it's about... 47 cents on a bottle of wine. And so the, so the total amount of revenue collected with the alcohol is how much? About 350 in that range. Mr. Speaker, doesn't that basically double the amount of the alcohol tax? I don't know. Uh, it, it may, we haven't done it since 1987. I don't know for sure. You maybe know more than I would. Could, could you say that so one more time? Seven cents on a glass of beer in a bar? Well, it would, it would, it would, it would I, I understand what the... Right. The so it would be about seven. It would be the equivalent of seven cents for 12 ounces of beer. <laughs> 
I'm very concerned about this. <laughs> Half a cent per ounce. Yeah. So you can, <laughs> but, uh, so you know, so I mean, if you think about it, if you have a beer every day, it's about 25 wine. bucks. And it's if you have a beer every day, it would equal about 25 bucks for the year. If you want to think about it that way. And you mentioned that it, this costs the state budget. How does that cost the state budget? Oh, corrections costs related to um, to alcohol consumption, um, healthcare costs related to uh, alcohol consumption, public safety costs, uh, you know, for, for accidents. I mean, there's, there's actually a whole variety of ways, and I think Representative Clark would be happy to sit down with you and walk through lots of those. And is your cigarette tax increase the same 94 cents? No, it's more are? than that. It's more, it's the land's number, so dollar sixty, I think, somewhere in that, yeah. Mr. Speaker, I, when you were campaigning, I didn't hear any Democrats talking about raising the alcohol tax. Some mentioned the cigarette tax, but why is it so important to raise the alcohol tax? If it was, why wasn't this mentioned, you know, before today? Right. Well, we think I, I actually think that we campaigned pretty transparently on all these, and a lot was not talked about the alcohol tax. You know, we believe that there are costs associated with, it, and we believe there's important investments that we need to make in our state, and um, that is part of what puts this bill together. So will the, the proceeds of this go to alcohol treatment or alcohol, I mean, are you making that link or are you just suggesting that there's a link there and leaving it back? We're, we're not making any links. We're not dedicating really any money in any of these. Um, but there are there are investments in housing and public safety that, that will be as, you know associated with those costs. But we're not, it's not dedicated funding. With all the revenue rates, there's still people in the hallway here chanting who are decrying cuts. Why you still cut? I think Minnesotans uh, expect us to do a balanced approach and to prioritize uh, the things we need to do. As I've said from the beginning, education, property tax relief, jobs uh, are the things we think are going to grow a prosperous economy. We actually think getting people jobs are going to reduce the need for some of those health and human services costs. Getting people educated are going to reduce the needs for those things. And those budgets continue to grow, uh, you know, at fast, you know, at rates that are perhaps unsustainable. So uh, I think that the Health and Human Services Bill that was actually put out, though, did what we said it was going to uh, try, try to accomplish, which is continue to put pressure on that growing area of, like, of our budget without um, uh, hurting the most vulnerable in our state. And I think Representative Huntley largely accomplished that. So you said it raises, the total package raises $1.5 billion for this by annual. You guys need you know, 625 to close the the deficit, another 800 million to pay off the school shift. Doesn't that eat up everything? Where are you getting the rest of your money? So that's that's including the, the school shift repayment. That's kind of the, the right. 1.5 million. But, but, but you guys are doing a, a bunch of additional spending on top of that. Where, right. Where's that coming That's included in this. So another way to look at it, I guess, uh, that was backing out the school shift and the uh, upfront sales tax exemption. So there's probably about two over $2 billion raised in, in the tax bill. And then we're paying off some of those things. So what's the two, 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 two and a half billion in that so range? Two and a half billion dollars of the tax increase in this bill. And then offset by significant, you know, over a half a billion in property tax relief uh, and uh, other reductions in the sales tax and other things. We are doing federal conformity in this bill, which are tax a number of tax cuts. It's included in the materials that that you have there um, that reduce, you know, the. Uh, Fairly significant conformity proposal uh, that we are it's going to reduce uh, taxes for middle class Minnesotans uh, by several hundred dollars a year. Yep. And so that, that's how that all nets up. The upfront sales tax exemption, it doesn't just have a one time cost for the transition year, but it has a continuing cost because many businesses now don't bother to apply for that exemption they have. Why fund it with a one time mechanism? Well, we fund that part that's one time with the one time mechanism, and then there's money in the. The, the tails on this are uh, the tails in our budget balance out and, and actually have a surplus uh, in, the, in the next biennium. So, um, a, a, not a big surplus, but uh, enough of a surplus certainly to cover the cost of that. I mean, that's built into our, our ongoing projections. So, it is balanced in both biennia. I'm saying here, um, what are you doing for the Mall of America 3 and could you explain what um, no. Uh, so the, uh, the, the 3M, uh, I think, is large. You should, you should talk to, to like Charlie Chesky about it. The 3M will be, you know, the, the kind of TIF proposal that they were coming forward or look like that. Um, the, the Mall of America proposal is, is, I think, will largely mirror what you talked about in the tax committee uh, earlier this year. Um, but you should talk to her about the details of that. Thank you. Thank you.
and they'll be available at six. And the sales tax portion was that relation to the transit the sales tax? Yeah. Okay. So you're not really mad at it. No, I think the bill that uh, Representative Hornstein passed out did not that did not include it. But you know, there's, there's lots of things that are going to be up for discussion as we move forward. Okay. 